Hello guys, my name is Nikander, I'm a professional blockchain developer and in this guide I'll show you how to work with some primitive types in tagged language. Let's get started. Today we will talk about integers, booleans and addresses. Let's open VS Code, create new project using the blueprint framework. Type npm create tone latest. Project name primitive types 1, first contract name integers. Clear the console and navigate to the project folder. Let's open integers contract inside the contracts folder. We can declare an integer with the keyword int and specify the bit width after the keyword as. int257 is the largest possible bit width for integer values. It's usually better to use smaller representations than 257 bits to reduce storage costs. For very large numbers that can be negative we can use uint256. u means unsigned. There are many more possible integers declarations like int256, uint128, int128, coins. It is a specialized integer type used specifically for representing amounts of cryptocurrency in transactions and balances. The coins type is designed to handle large values securely and efficiently, as operations involving cryptocurrency often require higher precision to avoid errors in financial transactions. Also there you int 64, as you can see we can assign hexadecimal values, int 64, we can assign negative values, we can't do this with unsigned integers. The rest representations are uint32, int32, uint16, int16, uint8, int8. As you can see, we haven't initialized four variables during definition. We can do this inside the init. We can assign hexadecimal value, decimal value, use the mathematical function PO to calculate 10 raised to the power of 9, use the tone function to convert the string 1.23 into a large integer that represents a specific amount in the tone blockchain's native currency units. The tone function is designed to handle token amounts, converting them into the smallest divisible unit of the currency. Here 1.23 is converted to 1 billion 230 million units. Let's talk about operations we can do with integers. Define two new integers a1 and a2. Create a new receive function. Define a temporary i variable. Runtime int type is always the largest one, int 257. So we don't need to provide the bit widths for local variables, they will be int 257 by default. We can do some basic mass expressions. Use modulo integer division, shift right, shift left, minimum between two numbers, maximum between two numbers, absolute value. We can use the dump function for debugging purposes to show the result. I'm using it here just as an example. We will see how to work with dump in the future videos. To see that we did everything right, Let's build the contract. Type npx blueprint build. Great, our contract doesn't have any errors. Now we can move on. Create a new contract. Type npx blueprint create. Name it bulls. Select a tagged empty contract. Let's see how we can work with boolean variables intact. 
we declare three boolean variables b1 is initialized to true b2 is initialized to false b3 is declared but not initialized immediately we use the init method to set the initial value of b3 in this method b3 is assigned to the logical negation of b2 since b2 is false b3 will be set to true create a receive method named show operations where we can perform a complex boolean expression create a new boolean variable called b initialized to true then reassign this variable to the expression where we use logical and or and not now we can build the contract to see that we have no errors type npx blueprint build select bulls contract and great we don't have any errors let's create the final contract called addresses to see how addresses work in ton blockchain define a1 variable with the type of address we can provide it with a string of a random address let's copy the following address and see its different representations in the tone blockchain addresses can appear in three main formats hexadecimal bounceable and non-bounceable each serving specific uses hexadecimal is a direct representation of the address in hexadecimal form showing the work chain id and 256-bit account id it's primarily used for precise low-level system interactions bounceable address used when safety in transaction is a priority these ad addresses allow messages to bounce back when the recipient doesn't exist or cannot handle the message preventing lost funds non-bounceable address preferred when the sender is sure of the recipient address and does not require the security measure of bouncing messages copy bounceable address and paste it in our code create a2 variable the same way but use non-bounceable address declare four more variables without initialization a3 a4 a5 and a6 initialize these variables inside the init function we can use tact method called new address to initialize a3 variable with the same address but in hexadecimal form we need to provide a work chain id 0 and a 256 bit public key hash we can use new address method with two zeros to initialize a4 variable with zero address the method my address can be used to get the address of the current contract the method sender gives us the address of the contract deployer so basically we have three variables that represent the same address let's see it we can create three get functions the first one compares address a1 and address a2 this should be true the second one compares address a2 and a3 this should be true the third one compares address a3 and a4 this should be false build the contract type npx blueprint build choose addresses great our contract is built without errors now we can go to the addresses test file inside the tests folder call the get address checker methods on the address contract instance then log the results run the test by typing npx blueprint test instead of the actual values we got promises because i forgot to use await let me fix it use await when calling getter functions and again run npx blueprint test 
The first checker is true. The second checker is true. And the third checker is false. That's exactly what we awaited. As you can see, the first, the second and the third variables are different representations of the same address. That's all for today, folks. Thanks so much for watching. If you found this guide helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell icon for more updates. See you in the next video.